Hey pals, I'm here today to talk about a new project I'm starting that I'm really excited for. So I need to give a little bit of context for this, I think. Last year, I uh, was talking to my Patreons about how much I DNF books and how sometimes it's annoying if you like buy a book because it's not published in your country. So you have to get it shipped over and you spend all this money on it and then you end up DNFing it quite soon in. And a few of my Patreons said, well, why don't you use the Kindle sample option. You can use it if you have a Kindle or you can use it on a Kindle app on your phone or tablet or whatever. Um, and you can read a sample of the book and then you know if you like the book or the writing at least before you actually have to pay for a copy. So I swiftly downloaded about 20 Kindle samples probably and then forgot about the whole thing. And then the start of a new year rolled around. I did like a, a wrap up over on my Patreon where I spoke about all my DNFing in 2023. And again, people said to me, have you been using the Kindle sample option? It's a really good idea. So then I downloaded another probably 80 Kindle samples in the first couple of weeks of the year. I realized I had over hundred Kindle samples, things were getting out of hand. And so many of the books on there were books that I really felt like I was gonna love, like five stars. But quite a few of those were books that my library didn't stock and weren't published in the UK. So they're gonna be like a bit trickier for me to get hold of. So I didn't wanna like risk buying them for full price and then, you know, realizing within the first few pages I didn't like the writing style. My reading taste is really down to writing style so there's lots of books where I really like the sound of the premise of the book but then I know within a couple of pages mostly if the writing style doesn't work for me so that's why for me it's really helpful to be able to read a sample of a book. So I think a Kindle sample probably gives you like 10% which is probably more than the first chapter. So what I've done is out of the hundred samples I had I have narrowed it down to the ones I think I'm going to give five stars and that happened to be 15. So in this video I'm going to talk about those 15 books and like why I think I'll give them five stars based on the premise alone and then there'll be a part two to this where I have read the first chapters of each of those books and I will then tell you which ones of the 15 still make the cut to being five star predictions because I'm sure sadly once I have read some of those first chapters I'll actually think hmm the writing style isn't as great as I thought it was gonna be or doesn't work for me as well as I thought it would. So I'll like reduce my expectations. And then part three is me then reading the ones that I still predicted I would give five stars to and seeing if I do give them five stars. There is a possible part four to this where I also read the ones that I changed my mind and thought I wouldn't give five stars and see what happens with those just to see like how good I am at um, yeah, making predictions based on the first chapters of books. So that is my plan. So this is part one, 15 books to talk about. So I'm gonna crack on because this video will be very, very long if not. So, and the first couple of books were recommended by other booktubers and I really love the way they describe these. So I decided to put them both on my list and they're both sort of like small town dramas. Um, I've sort of grouped a lot of these books by categories that I like reading about. The first book is The Caretaker by Ron Rash. This came out in 2023 and it has an average rating of 4.35 on the story graph, which is of course incredibly high. And I heard Amelia talk about this over at Amelia Barlow Books. Amelia and I have really similar reading tastes. So as soon as I heard her describe this one, I immediately wanted to read it and so I had a little bit of a look into it and I think this just sounds really wonderful and like a really sort of cosy um, slice of life drama which is a type of book I really enjoy but don't read enough of. So the premise of this is this is set in a small Appalachian town um, around the time when along with the young, a lot of the young men are sent to fight in the Korean War. And we follow one man who is left behind. He is the caretaker of the local cemetery and he can't be sent to fight because of the disability he has. One of his friends who's sent off to fight asks him if he will care for his wife while he's gone because this man's family haven't taken very kindly to his wife and so he's worried about her. So you follow the lives of these three characters and how they intertwine and yeah, it's supposed to be really beautiful. It says it brilliantly depicts the human capacity for destruction and delusion all too often justified as acts of love. Um, I think that sounds lovely and I find cemeteries quite peaceful places so I'm hoping there's lots of really uh, beautiful descriptions of his life in the cemetery. The next one is The Road to Dalton by Shannon Bowring. I saw Rick talk about this one. I will link his video above so you can go and hear about this one. And this one also came out in 2023. It also has a super high average rating on Storygraph of 4.24. This is set in 1990 in a small town in Maine and it follows multiple characters. Um, I really like 
I like books that follow multiple characters always, but I particularly like when those characters are people who like live in one building or a extended community. Um, I, I love family dramas told from multiple perspectives as well, but I think it's really interesting when a group of people like pull together this like um, patchwork quilt of a location and I think that is what this book is supposed to do and it says that this book speaks about the unspoken truths of a small town and Rick said that it was really dialogue led which is something I've realized in the last couple of years I absolutely love and he said that it's a book that speaks to the dignity of a mundane life which I think sounds absolutely beautiful then when I heard a fair well that's not quite true I heard a few people talk about but it's a book that keeps popping up because it was nominated for a lot of prizes in Canada. And that is Scarborough by Catherine Hernandez. I want to read pretty much all of her books. Her newest release sounds amazing, but her books aren't published here, sadly. So this was published in 2017. Um, and this follows a low income, culturally diverse neighborhood east of Toronto. Um, this multitude of voices tell the story of a tight knit community under fire. And the descriptions of the different people in the community it follows sound really unique and interesting. I'm going to listen to this one on audio because I've heard amazing things about the audiobook. And it says it offers a raw yet empathetic glimpse into a troubled community that locates its dignity in unexpected places. So I think it'll be interesting to juxtapose this one against The Road to Dalton because I think that's going to be about a much less urban community. Um, and so I think it'll be interesting to see the different types types of lives that these people have. Then I have a few family dramas, of course. I absolutely adore family dramas and just always want to read more of them. Um, and this one was recommended to me by a few subscribers, and that is Little Monsters by Adrian Broder. As soon as I, um, I look up every book you recommend to me, so if you ever mention books in the comments, I always go and look into them. And a lot of them do get added to my, uh, you know, giant online TBR. It just takes me a while to get to them. But as soon as I looked into this one, I saw that it was being compared to The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller, which I read a couple of years ago and loved. And so I immediately was like, I have to read this one. So this is also set across one summer in a family home in Cape Cod, which is the premise of The Paper Palace as well. But in this one, we are following two adult siblings who are coming back to their family home for their father's 70th birthday. And when they grew up, they were super, super close until their mother died. And there was this sort of rupture between them, which led them to be much more distant. And each member of the family has their own secrets to one another. And there's all this sort of simmering drama. And you watch across this one summer in Cape Cod as all these um, sort of underlying secrets and tension come to a head. Um, so I think that sounds really interesting. Always love a family drama. Um, setting is a massive uh, feature for me in my reading. And this one sounds like it could be really good for me. This one only has 3.74 on Storygraph. But I will say like a lot of these books have ratings of around that because you know, reading tastes are quite specific. And so there's lots of things that I really enjoy that, you know, perhaps some people wouldn't. I also think a lot of the time an average rating is really down to the marketing. Like if a book has been marketed to sound more like a thriller or a really twisty book, then a lot of the times people rate it lower um, because they feel that it's a lot slower pace than they were expecting or less dramatic. And those are things I'm absolutely fine with. So I'm hoping to love this one. So I just accidentally kicked my camera tripod. So I'm not sure if this has moved slightly. I apologize if it has. The next book is Aoi by Becky Manawatu. I heard lots of Australian and New Zealand authors rave about this one because this is by a really celebrated Maori writer. And this book did amazingly well over in New Zealand and Australia. Um, this has an average rating of 4.52 on Storygraph and it's published in 2019. Um, this is focused around the lives of two brothers and it's told in alternating perspectives, one of them being a younger boy and one of them being um, slightly old um, in early adulthood. And their mother has disappeared and their father has recently died and they come from quite a difficult family background with lots of addiction. And they're both trying to make their own way in the world, um, but the older brother has to leave the younger brother, I think with like extended family or family friends. And you're watching both their perspectives as they're sort of battling to survive and to stay in touch with one another. And it is supposed to be absolutely beautiful, although quite a difficult read in terms of content. So I will definitely read this one when I'm feeling um, yeah, fairly strong and able to deal with um, some upsetting scenes. 
Um, I'm going to be listening to this one on audio because I've heard that the audio is a really amazing um, route to go with this one. And the next one is Calling for a Blanket Dance by Oscar O'Kear. This was published in 2022 and it has a 4.3 average rating on Storygraph. This is doing something I really love in that it is a novel told via a collection of short stories. But what I think is particularly interesting about this one and what has really drawn me in is that we're actually following this young man and we're following his life um, and the struggles he has because of a lot of intergenerational trauma but we're seeing his life from the perspectives of all the members of his family and not him i believe the last story is from his perspective but you sort of build up and up to him and i think that's so interesting to i really love novels where there's multiple perspectives because i think it's a really good way to learn to be compassionate and to realize that when you're in someone else's eyes they see it really differently and it makes it really hard to judge people when you've seen it from all angles and so i think it's really interesting to see the different members of this man's family through each of their eyes but also to see him through all of their eyes before you actually meet him um, and i believe he has um, the same heritage as the author who is an enrolled citizen of the cherokee nation and the kiowa tribe of oklahoma and also has mixed Mexican heritage. So I think this is supposed to be really beautiful. Again, I think may have some difficult subject matter, um, but I don't think I've even seen anyone review this on Booktube. I think this might have been one I saw on like a list of releases for that year that um, were really good. And I've wanted to get to it since then, but it's one that's quite pricey because it's not published over here. Um, hence why I want to try a sample of it before ordering a copy. The next few are books about friendship groups or a couple of friends. This is something I've realised I really enjoy reading about and I want to try and read more books that feature friendships. The first one is called Between Dog and Wolf by Christina Gorcheva Newbury but in North America I believe this is published with the title The Orchard and it has a really different cover. I feel like I would be a lot less pulled to read this book with the American title and cover. I think the uh, UK cover and title are much more interesting. And this one has an average rating on Storygraph of 4.08, so again, quite a high average. So in this, we follow four teenagers in 1980s Soviet Russia. Um, I'm not sure how this works perspective-wise, if we sort of follow all of them at once or if we get it from each of their perspectives, but it says in the blurb, and I'm gonna read this because I think it sounds amazing. While depicting a bloody and desperate era, this exceptional debut novel pulsates with life. It is radiant with friendship and love, the power of literature, values and politics, as its characters struggle to survive, to save their country and one another. The next one is one of the ones I downloaded a sample of, it's like one of the first Kindle samples I downloaded, um, and I still haven't read that sample. And that is Cherry Beach by Laura McPhee Brown. This was published in 2020, and it has an average rating of 3.85 on Storygraph. Now, I heard quite a few Australian booktubers rave about this one because it is by an Australian author, and I just immediately thought it sounded like a book I would want to read. Um, in particular, I'm really interested in books that deal with the friendship of children or of women. Um, I really like seeing how women interact with one another, and yeah, even though I read predominantly books by women, I always want there to be more books that follow like a group of female characters um, and their sort of like entanglements and their lives together and this sounds like it does precisely that. So we follow these two women called Hetty and Ness who have been best friends since childhood and they've lived in suburban Melbourne for their whole lives and they decide to move to Toronto and they start to live in shared housing. Now what I think is really interesting about this is it says that Ness is hopelessly in love with Hetty but has never revealed it um, and Hetty starts a new relationship with this man and her life really starts to spiral um, and she starts messing with a lot of drugs and a lot of bad men and yeah becomes really sort of unwell because of it and at the same time as that is happening Ness has actually met a woman who she starts to feel happy with um, it's so you sort of watch as they uh, fall apart and then um, sort of you know try to come back together and save one another and it says it is a revelatory story of friendship and desire we have another australian book um i've realized i think i only have like one british book on this list so yeah which is fine um i'm quite happy to have a bit of a mixture i think americans probably do dominate which i think is always the case with my reading but um yeah so the other australian book is where the trees were by inga simpson and um, again i've heard quite a few australian booktubers rave about inga simpson's work and so i want to try at least one of her books and this is um, her novel that most intrigues me. So this was published in 2016. It has an average rating of 3.89. And we follow five childhood friends in Australia who live near this grove of trees. And one day they're out um, by this particular tree and they make a promise to one another that they'll always be friends and they'll always protect this tree. 
This ends in disaster. The blurb doesn't reveal how. You jump forward to 17 years later um, when one of the friends has the chance to make amends for this disaster. And it says that this book looks at the innocence of childhood and the scars that stay with you for life. I really enjoy books that have like a past timeline and a present, particularly when there's been some big epic moment or sort of fallout, you know, in the past that hasn't yet been revealed to you. So you sort of see the repercussions of it in the present before you know what actually happened. I think I maybe have a couple of more books like that on this list. And then another one that was recommended to me by subscribers, and as soon as I read this blurb, I was like, brilliant recommendation, I will love this book. And that is Three by Valerie Perrin. I believe this is a French novel. It was published in 2021, and I think it also has a pretty high average rating of 4.29. This one, similar-ish premise to the previous one. Um, we follow three friends during their childhood in 1986, and then we come back to them in 2017. Uh, a car is pulled from a river with a body in it. Um, and we're following this local journalist who is looking into the case, and somehow I believe this case links to those three friends in something that happened in 1986. This book spans three decades and it's over 500 pages and I do not read enough sort of longer literary fiction novels. If I ever read a book over 500 pages, it's usually going to be fantasy and I actually really enjoy spending that much time in a world and I always think when you read a literary fiction novel that's that long, um, it usually feels kind of... Um, like just getting lost with these people and you become really attached to the characters. And that's something I love about reading longer books. And so um, I'm really hopeful for this one. Um, it has really amazing reviews. So yeah, fingers crossed, I love this one. And then one that has more mixed reviews and I'm pretty sure I stumbled across this one because I really enjoyed um, I Have Some Questions For You by Rebecca Mackay. And I was just looking into books that had a similar premise. Now this does have a really similar premise, okay? Um, if you've read I Have Some Questions For You, you're gonna recognize a lot of what I describe here. Um, and that is The Damages by Genevieve Scott. This came out in 2023 and it has an average rating of 3.67. It has two timelines. Um, one is in 1997 and we follow Roz. Um, she starts at a new university and decides to sort of like reinvent herself because she wants to fit in of the in crowd. Um, she has a slightly sort of, I guess, like geeky or less confident roommate. And when she's in the room with her, she's really friendly and pally and sort of uses her a bit. And when she's outside the room, she acts like she doesn't know her and really snubs her and it's just really cruel to her. Um, there is a snowstorm and this young woman's body is found during that snowstorm. So then you jump to 2020 um, and Roz is sort of dealing with her life when her partner is accused of sexual harassment and it makes her start having to re-examine a lot of aspects of her life and what she's believed to be true and it says it looks at the lies we tell ourselves and the lies we tell each other um, so this is very similar to ask some questions for you in that there's this um, case that happened in the past um, and then also this sort of accusation at the um, husband of the protagonist in the present but the way this is described is also making me think of the secret history, like, you know, like a body um, in an ice or a snowstorm. So yeah, this one I'm probably the most anxious about just because of the average rating. But I feel like because I really enjoyed I Have Some Questions For You, I'm likely to really enjoy this one too, because some of the really positive ratings the way they're describing it sounds like something I would really love. So yeah, I'm really intrigued by this one. Then obviously I couldn't do a list of five star predictions without some coming of age stories on the list. So the one British novel I have is Flatlands by Sue Hubbard. This was published in 2023, it has an average rating of 3.89. This is one I stumbled across because I, yeah, I think I was just browsing books online and somehow this one came up. Um, and yeah, any book that has a title like this, I'm sort of intrigued by because I come from a, a really flat area in England and there seem to be more novels um, coming out that are set in um, like Fenland, which is something I really enjoy, but there's not enough of them. And also the cover just looked really cozy and really drew me in. Blurb said that this is for fans of Atonement, which I read years ago and really enjoyed, but I mean, I read it over 10 years ago, so I can't really be that sure. But I think it sounds like 
a blend of two novels I really enjoyed, uh, those being The Offing by Benjamin Myers and Doreen by Barbara Noble, because it says that this is a moving tale of an unlikely friendship and the beauty of nature set in the wild wetland landscape of the English Fens during World War II. So I believe we follow a um, young girl evacuee as she makes friends with an older man in the community who I'm not sure why, but isn't sent away to fight. So the descriptions sound like this is a really beautiful, gentle, slow coming of age novel with lots of nature writing, which I absolutely love. Um, just sounds like it's gonna be really focused on like the minutia of life, which I, yeah, I just love a blend of like a rural novel that's really slow. And yeah, I really enjoyed the friendship in the offing of this young man and this older woman. And it sounds like this is sort of dealing with the reverse of that. I loved looking at the life of um, an evacuee in Doreen, what it was like for an evacuee to be sent from somewhere like London to the countryside. So I'm hoping this book is going to blend um, those two themes and I'll really love it. Then we have Edinburgh by Alexander Chee. This is perhaps the only one on the list that's a little bit of a cheat because I have read an essay from Alexander Chee, which I really, really loved in the essay collection called What My Mother and I Don't Talk About, which I would highly recommend. The way he wrote about yeah, his relationship with his mother I just thought was really beautiful. So I think this is supposed to be the most autobiographical out of his novels. I also think it's supposed to be quite brutal. So again, I'm going to need to be in the right mood to read this one. Um, this was published in 2001. It has an average rating of 4.15. And it's about a young Korean American boy, I think he's 12 years old. Um, and he joins a, he becomes a soprano in an all boys choir in Maine. And it says that I think years later, it's revealed that um, the men who ran the choir were sexually abusing lots of the boys and he has to sort of come to terms with that um, and start to revisit what happened to him and what happened to his friends and consider like his complicity in keeping quiet about it and this thing that he hasn't spoken about to a lot of people now everybody knows and it's about him trying to deal with that. I'm pretty sure that some of the novel is written from the perspective of him as an adult and some is written from the perspective of him as a child. So yeah, I think this is going to be a really difficult read, um, but I'm really interested to read anything from this author and out of his works, this is the one I'm most interested in. Right, now we're on to the last two and these don't really fit in any themes, so I've put them at the end. And the first one is Half a Lifelong Romance by Eileen Chang. I believe this book came out yeah, in 1948, so it's probably the oldest book I've got on the list. And I've added this to the list simply because I heard Claire over at the channel, Claire Reads Books, talk about this a couple of years ago now and give it an absolutely rave review. Claire is one of the absolute best reviewers out there on booktube, in my opinion. And whatever the genre, she always convinces me that I really want to read the book she's talking about. When I read the blurb, it's probably not going to sound like the type of book I would usually read, but the way she described this was so moving and made it feel like it was um, really epic in scope in terms of telling this story of a life and yeah I, I was just really pulled in by her description. So before I forget this is an average rating of 4.03 on Storygraph which again is quite high. So this is set in Shanghai in the 1930s and we follow a young man, he's an engineer and he's fallen in love with his colleague. He is determined to resist his family's efforts to match him with his wealthy cousin so that he can marry the woman he truly loves. The dark circumstances, a lustful brother-in-law, a treacherous sister, a family secret, force the two young lovers apart. As they go on their separate ways, they lose track of one another and their lives become filled with feints and schemes, misconnections and tragic misunderstandings. At every turn, societal expectations seem to thwart their prospects for happiness, but they dare to hold, hold out hope, however slim, that they might one day meet again. A glamorous, wrenching tale set against the glittering backdrop of an extraordinary city, Half a Lifelong Romance is a beloved classic from one of the essential writers of 20th century China. So yeah, this just sounds amazing. And I like the sound of her other books as well. So I'm hoping to enjoy this and then um, yeah, go and read one of her other books. I'm pretty sure that when Claire spoke about this, she sort of compared the writer to like a Chinese Jane Austen, which I think sounds really intriguing. Then another older book, this is Eva's Man by Gail Jones. I stumbled across Gail Jones and she's been publishing over many years. This came out in 1976, but she's recently had a new book coming out like every year for the last few years. So she's having a bit of a renaissance. And I think because of that, her books have been republished um, as Virago and Modern Classics. They have beautiful covers. Um, and I just stumbled across one in a bookshop and was like, oh, these sound intriguing. And to be honest, I'd happily read, um, there's sort of three um, older books she has that have been republished in Virago editions that are probably her most famous. Um, 
and I could have included any of them on this list because I really like the sound of all of them but this is the one I think that's pulled me in the most um, and this has an average rating of 3.94 this is probably the shortest book I have on my list this is only 180 pages I usually prefer novels to be over 280 pages I'd say but I've heard that Gail Jones is excellent at writing really short novels um, and being really precise so it says that this is a gripping psychological portrait of a woman unable to love for fear of pain in prison for the bizarre murder of her lover Eva Midi in Canada weaves together memory and fantasy to reveal a life tormented by the brutality of sexual abuse and emotional silence brilliantly experimenting with language Jones infuses her graphic and powerful narrative of the triple yoke of race class and gender with a rich musical and oral idiom I hate saying that final word. Um, it never sounds right when I say it. So yeah, I think this sounds really interesting. I read some reviews and just love the description of this. I think her writing can be quite experimental and as it says, sometimes is um, sort of pushing the limits of what writing can do, which is something I'm really interested in. Um, I am quite interested in reading novels, nonfiction that take place in places of containment whether that is a prison or like a psychiatric ward i have lots of issues with the way in which we deal with crime in general um but in particular a crime like this one that's down to uh, self-defense um, and the way in which um even today but definitely more in the past we would put the label of insanity on a woman um, for doing something that seemed pretty sane um, and so yeah I'm really interested to read this one and just to real ga read Gail Jones work in general. So those are my 15 five star predictions I feel like I've got a real mix of stories like having now sat and spoken about all of them at once I'm even more excited and maybe I should predict should I predict how many I think will make it to still being a five star prediction once I've read the first chapter I should and this is going to sound pretty depressing because obviously I've just described them all and I think they sound amazing but I know how stingy I am and I know how particular I am so I'm going to guess that only eight survive eight out of 15 I think I'll still say will be five star reads I'll be shocked if there's more than eight because I am that bitch so yeah we shall see I would love to know if you have read any of these books or any other books by these authors I would love to know if you have any five star predictions for this reading year and I would also love to know how you choose what books you want to read do you use uh, kindle samples try chapter hacks how do you do it um, and how do you deal with it when you can't find a book for example from your library and so it feels like a big um, you know financial commitment to buy a book without having read anything from that author before. What do you do? So yeah, I am very excited to go away and read these um, first chapters and to come back. I don't know if I'll be able to do that all in one video or whether I'll have to split it into two. I'd like to do it all in one, so we shall see. And hopefully I'll be back within the next couple of weeks talking about the first chapters of these books. And hopefully I'll be saying that I think 15 out of 15 will be five stars, but um, we shall see. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.